let's talk about when we are self betraying or self sabotaging and getting in the way of or slowing down or hindering our own recovery and healing from toxic relationships. Let's talk about what that's about. My name is Lise Colucci, and I'm here to help you with all things related to narcissistic relationship recovery or toxic relationship recovery. And if you like these videos, please hit the thumbs up, please hit subscribe. Let's get started. So self-sabotaging. So who here does that? Let me know if this happens to you. Do you constantly have an inner critic in your head that is judging every action that you do as if you're the worst person in the world? Do you feel like you're at fault for all the things that happen to you? Do you set up situations in your life and then as you back out of them, feel like a failure? There are so many ways of self-sabotaging. Do you take things so personally that it's impossible to feel what's really going on in the situation with another person that is not just taking it personally, it's going beyond that. It is looking through the lens of your trauma and seeing everything as critical towards you when actually you're the only one being critical towards yourself. Do you find yourself constantly putting yourself down for every mistake you make or even not being able to appreciate the good things that you do and who you are because you're constantly putting yourself down and self-sabotaging your happiness? So there's all kinds of ways, right, that we sabotage ourselves and our well-being after being in toxic relationships. Our minds have been trained to talk bad about ourselves, to cr be critical of ourselves, to believe we're the ones that are wrong, all of that. So let's talk about this. When you feel like you're self-sabotaging in your life, and you'll know how that is for yourself when you start to take accountability in your own life, not for the things other people did, but for now, how you are going forward and how you um, perceive things and how you are able to um, have interactions with others and things like that, when you are brave and look honestly at what the truth is behind your actions. So say you have an argument with someone because you feel like they're being critical of you when really all they did was ask a question, okay? And the question wasn't critical. It was just a question like, why, why, why do you do it that way? Not why do you do it that way, but you like, like, but it's triggering, right? So when you're triggered by someone else and you have a reaction and you realize that you're sabotaging the situation because you brought your trigger into the conversation and they didn't have any intent of being unkind to you. This happens a lot, right? And in that in that moment do you then get critical and start sabotaging the situation for yourself that could be a really wonderful learning moment for how to interact when you feel uncomfortable and triggered that's one example if you're brave and you look at it and you say oh okay so when i look through the lens of my trauma i am going to be reactive and when i'm reactive I can't hear what the other person is actually saying and I'm not really being there with them. I'm being there with my own trauma, my own past. Then then there's something to do about it, right? Then you can say, okay, so I need to what? Slow down, take a step aside, take a breath, don't reply right away, whatever it is, and try and listen to what they're saying or recognize that I can't right now step away until I'm calm enough to come back and hear what they're saying. So it gives you different options. Once you see something, you can then make choice. Once you're able to just without judgment, see it. So how do you get past judgment? How do you get past the self-sabotaging judgment that we do to ourselves all the time? This is my big thing lately is you guys, you got to stop judging every action you do as wrong and stop judging yourself as a problem in, in your own life because you're the one you got to live with, right? You're the one that the only way free from the toxic patterning that is now in your head because of toxic people is to release yourself from the self-judgment that has now become your way of thinking. So stop the judgment and move forward. How do you do that? You recognize it. Be brave and recognize it. Another thing is set, restate the limiting belief, restate the judgment into something more practical. So if you're like, God, I'm so stupid. I shouldn't have done that. Why did I do? I'm always doing the stupidest things, whatever. Stop. Say, oh, I did that judgment thing again. Don't judge the judgment. I'm not, you're not bad because you made a judgment, right? And say, okay, so this thing I did 
was not the right way of doing it. What would have been a better way of doing it? Okay, right in that moment, that proves you're not stupid because you are, you know, problem solving. Use your problem solving skills to see yourself more kindly and more openly so that you can see different directions you can take in your life. Realize that no one is perfect. Not one human being on this planet is perfect. Nobody is perfect. You cannot, you cannot create a perfect human. This is, this is life is not so that we can then become perfect, right? That's, that's chasing something that is unrealistic. And why would you want that? Right? So no one's perfect. Let that go. Be imperfect. Be imperfectly yourself. Learn to be more you. It is, in fact, beautiful to have imperfections. Those are the things that make people unique and interesting often, right? Those are the things that make people, um, when you see someone up against something imperfect about themselves, let's just say like what might be um, something they struggle with, do you not feel proud of them for struggling? Do you not feel like inspired by their struggle or inspired by watching them work through something? Of course you do. So do that for yourself. Listen to your mind, but also listen to your body. If you can listen to how your body is experiencing the things that happen, how your body is experiencing the self-sabotaging words you're saying to yourself or the self-sabotaging experiences you're having, if you can listen to the way your body is reacting and relax those parts of your body, give those parts of your body attention and release the emotional energy through that, you can heal a lot just in that. Because see what happens is your body has a reaction which sends a signal to the brain that something's wrong. Your brain tells your emotions, whatever the emotion is, and then you start this feedback loop. If you can relax the body in the areas where it's affected and you can really work to heal those areas of the body, it breaks the feedback loop. And then you only have two bits to contend with the emotions and the head, which can then aren't then the body's like, Hey, yeah, but relax. It sort of brings everything else down a little bit and, and helps you calm down those self sabotaging thoughts, seek your dreams, follow your dreams, do what works for you. Keep looking. If you don't know what it is that you enjoy, keep looking in life, being curious, being open to your own life. Stop apologizing unless it is something you really need to say, I am sorry for, please stop apologizing. I had somebody yesterday, I was late to something and they said they were sorry. And I'm like, why are you sorry? And I said, I apologize. Thank you for, you know, understanding. And I apologize if I um, caused you to wait. And they said, no, no, I'm sorry. And I said, why are you sorry? You see, stop apologizing when it isn't anything you've done. If it's something you've done, make a clean and concise, clear, short ap apology as necessary, or simply say, thank you. Thank you for waiting. Thank you for this. Not in an arrogant way, but for real, like that is much nicer. I would much rather someone say, thank you for waiting. I, I realize I'm late. Thank you for waiting. I would say, you're welcome. No problem. You know, and honestly, I'd mean it unless that was like all the time or they were like late when I had something else to do. You know, it just depends on the situation. But really, thank you instead of I'm sorry unless you really need to say sorry. You do something, you get mad at someone and unreasonably blah, 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 and you need to say sorry, say sorry. Otherwise, stop. Okay, you guys, recognize that you have potential. You have possibility. You have a whole life outside of this toxic mess that has been piled on top of you. It's time to shed some of these toxic beliefs and these toxic patterns that have been set up inside of you from toxic people drilling it into your head and into your psyche and into your emotions that something's wrong with you and that you're the problem. It's time to let that go. So if you need help with anything, you want to talk further on this or anything like that, you know where to find me in the main description of every video. Hit the thumbs up, hit the like, and we'll keep talking about topics like this to help you get moving forward on your healing journey after toxic people in your life. Take care. See you next time.